This is my introduction to trading back to basics videos. If you have any questions or just starting on trading, this is the first video I recommend people watching in the series. Thanks. This is Dan Max, CDXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is a back to basics 101 version of just how to start trading, what to look for, what to be aware of. And if you're newer to trading, just kind of give you a little reference point to begin. Again, if you are newer and you want to, the link to the description of the Discord room is below. Please come in here, check it out, check out the side rooms for all the alerts, daily recaps, tons of educational videos, back to basics videos, they're all in here. All I ask is that if you are learning and new to trading, try to find the answer first in some of the references to the material versus just coming here and go, hey, is Apple going higher? Is Apple going lower? Just asking questions like that, I feel like is somewhat insulting to the people who've studied before and worked harder because the answers typically aren't that easy. And ultimately, you don't want the easy answer. You want to be able to figure this out on your own. So the best way to start is to really dig deep and figure out where things are and what's going on so you can learn. Again, if you just want easy answers, this is probably not the place for you. But if you really want to learn and spend the time to actually grow, become a great trader, or learn how to trade to make long-term wealth, this is a good place to start. And let's get into it. So one of the first things I want to talk about, again, is candle formations. A lot of people don't use candles sometimes. And that thing, you know, the thing I tell people is, to me, if you don't realize, Japanese started use, drawing candles back 5,000 years ago to track the prices of rice and they use this as a tool for the Japanese rice traders to kind of gather sentiment and use the candles to alert themselves of action or inaction and so if you're not familiar typically a green candle opens at the low closes at the high red candle closes opens at the high closes at the low these wicks are the intraday ranges so we may have closed here, for example, on ExxonMobil around 75, but at some point during the day, it actually got down to 66. Sorry, this is a monthly, 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 sorry, monthly candle. The M is for monthly, M is for monthly. So if you think about that, this month had a range where it opened at 78, closed at 75, but during that month, it tested all the way down to 65. Now, if you see that and you look at the wick, you go, hmm, could that have been a bottom? Someone was clearly buying down here. Again, the action isn't always that simple. Again, this is a monthly chart, so this is takes months. And so typically you're not going to be you know, entering trades solely based on the monthly candles. But however, we'll get into some of that here shortly. So now you know what candles, kind of what they mean, ultimately in the simplistic forms. The formations themselves will tell you a lot. When they open and close near the same price, typically in decision, when they stay within themselves meaning let me find one real quick this is kind of an indecision you need to see more information it, again it's not as simple as it appears or it will be and it's one of those things where every time frame matters and so let's get into the next because you you see candles you understand how they work hopefully after reading that or listening to this and ultimately if you need to google the basics of candles and what they mean Trust me, this isn't a video to go into all the formations because that in itself is a video that'll take plenty of time. And I just want this to be like a starting point so you have a reference. So the next thing, again, when you look at the daily candles, keep in mind, when you are trading off of a time frame, those candles need a form in the sense that if you're expecting something to take days to play out, don't expect that your trade is going to start right away right this minute you enter it you know it's all that i tell people all the charts all the time they matter that's why i trade with eight screens because i want to see all the different time frames because typically an entry for say a short one of the examples we're shorting is xop it's going to take time for it to top and one of the things that you see is the actions getting tired tired usually precedes a big move as you can see and when i mean tired i mean stagnation chop say chop before the drop or chop before the pop Again, this is, might take days to play out. I could be ultimately wrong here, but one of the things you have to be aware of as a newer trader is your time frame. Now, again, that makes sense, right? If you're looking at the daily chart, it could take days or weeks for a trade to play out. If you're looking at the monthly chart, it could take weeks, many weeks, months to play out. If you're trading off the 10-minute chart, you expect things to happen within, say, a few hours. So I hope those references make sense because a lot of people 
they assume the time frames just correlate always to the same, like to their mindset of what they want to happen now. And that's very, that's, it's very dangerous to think that like if you're trading off the monthly or daily or weekly chart, that's something that you're going to get into for a trade is going to work immediately. That doesn't make sense. If the reference point is a longer period of time, trades take time to set up. Hopefully you'll realize that because a lot of people think V bottoms and V tops and straight line moves are typical. No, if you really think about the logical statistical averages of the market, it moves up a third of the time, moves down a third of the time, and it goes sideways a third of the time. The only difference is in bull markets, the amplitude up is bigger than the down, and the chops usually lead to more up. Bear markets, the opposite. The amplitude of the down is bigger, the chops lead to down, and the up is more of a counter trend, you know, rebalance or oversold condition. So hope that makes sense. Again, there's a lot of little things that go on with the market, and you just have to have in your mind the simplistic idea that, your ego, your thoughts, your beliefs don't necessarily translate into something happening right this second. And so if that's how you trade and you're trying to day trade, I personally don't do a ton of day trading because, again, I need very specific reference points to measure off of them, like where I'm going to get in and get out. So, again, if you stop by the Discord room, we can get into that topic or I'll do another video. Let's get back into the Discord room and let's talk about the volume price analysis rules. And, again, I, 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 I look at these rules overall is the rules of the game simple if you go to a casino you go play poker you go to any game there are rules there's sets of rules that mean particular things there's going to be ideas that are repeating patterns or ways to play the game and i want people to realize that the market is a casino it's meant to take people's money if you know that in the back of your mind you have to be aware of your own greed and fear being used against you to make you act at times where you should or shouldn't be acting. Meaning, you buy at the highs, you sell at the lows, you chase action, you you feel something based on what the news is telling you and you react to it and ultimately you lose. And this is the hardest part of trading because what people don't realize is that there literally is a rules to the game. and. Get into the rules, and you'll see. I mean, I'm leaving it up here, and so if you ever you need to hit pause, you can check it out. But these rules are very simple, and the market maker is always trying to take retail money. I mean, that's the goal. That's what their algorithms, that's what all the action is meant to do. So if you have an emotional mindset, it's no different than going on tilt and poker, over, you know, sitting at the casino gambling too long, you know, just doing things emotionally at times lead you to problems because the market is going to trigger off of your emotions. Like people don't realize that like one of the things that the markets are continuously doing based on the news, the action, the price action, just it's to insinuate your emotions so that you can't execute proper trades. Why? Because again, the market makers are trying to take your money. So if you hit pause and you read these rules and you get, and you take a look at it, you start to realize wow, it is literally a casino. Like, it's just another game. Now, people say, well, buy and hold is the best strategy. You can't lose long-term. I would argue that define long-term because I have this conversation with folks all the time and people who say tech is always the future. And, I, you know, no one argues that technology is the future. The future is always the future. But there was a period of time where technology went nowhere for 16 years. Now, was that happening as we speak? I think we are close. Buy and hold works until it doesn't. People don't understand what a bear market is or a rotation of money. Like when the de demographics or long-term trends change, you don't want to own particular certain stocks. And that just, the market rotates. So I tell people that like long-term holds, maybe of ETFs and index funds, particular stocks, no way. There are times where even the best stocks don't act well and the worst stocks act great. So that in itself just means that you need to be picky. You need to have rules. You need to be thoughtful about how you pick things because at a certain point, something, I mean, for example, Google, this action cannot sustain. The bigger they are, the more likely competition's coming, the more likely that ultimately something will change. And I tell people that all the time. Like you believing in certainty in the markets is 
that's just it's like it's like the word lock in betting on sports like oh it's a lock they're guaranteed to win once the psychology of the market feels like that i tell people usually you're on the other side of the trend meaning the backside of a mountain and you know when i get in and i'll end this topic very quickly because again companies that i'm familiar with when i started trading this is cisco does it not look like what google did like cisco was the future in the tech bubble or tech times and then it went nowhere and it's still back near the not near the highs so that's all again that's a video for another time if you want i did a video on december i think 28th about the tech war who wins who loses so let's get into some of the next things that i like to follow for stocks um i like to follow the moving averages and the fibs and let's uh Let's pull up some daily charts because sometimes the monthly moving averages aren't as important. So I'm in I'm trading Apple right now. I'm currently short Apple. This thing has been on a tear for a long period of time. It went up for many, many straight days. Anyway, took a short near the highs, didn't get all at the highs, but here's an example of a moving average. So this line right here is the 20 day moving average. 100 days in yellow, 200 days in blue. 50 days in orange. Now, how you how you paint your moving averages is you on you. It's the simple moving average. If you most trading softwares will let you edit it. You can change it from simple to exponential to smooth, weighted, volume weighted. I just do simple. Again, I make the colors very simple. I make them thick enough so that I can't miss them. For example, I use them to as I would say like kind of yard markers on a trade to weigh something out. So, for example. The QQQ. I think it's in a downtrend. It's starting a, a downtrend. How long this will last, that's another time for another video. Notice what happened. When it hit the 50 day, it paused. When it hit the 100 and 200 day, it paused. We backed off, we hit it again, and then we failed. Notice what happened when we hit the 20 day, we bounced. Notice when we broke down, we held the 50 day, and then when it broke below it, now the 50 day is resistance. Now I know I'm talking quickly and that might seem very simplistic, but what I hope you're noticing is that these moving averages act as resistance and support lines. That's important to know because you need to be able to have references against the market. It doesn't just always go up and doesn't always go down. So when people, even in a down move, look at it has pops, it pops, pops, it pops up to the 20 day, pops up to the 200 day, it fails. Okay, get back over the 20 day, then boom, it goes lower, hits the 20 day, lower. I hope you're seeing that these this action is acting as references. It's not guaranteed action. It's not guaranteed like every time you hit the 20-day fails, every time you hold the 100-day, oh, it's good. No, you're not looking at certainty. You're looking at the mindset of probabilities. And the probability mindset will say, I need to watch these areas and I need to take some off. Like if you were a bull, you probably need to be taking profits up here. On a lower high, you definitely get nervous. I know that's very simplistic. Again, stop by the Discord room, but that's the kind of stuff you need to be aware of next i like to draw trend lines so here's a trend line that was bearish you know we're down in this downward funnel hopefully you can see it notice what happened once we broke it we went higher like you as a trader need to be aware of trends and channels and all these little you know all these little nuances of trading that's why it can be so difficult you know the tlt we've talked about like once you couldn't hold the hundred month the channel low, I mean, I drew it here for a reason. Like, here's each channel potential bottom. I mean, we're there now. Now, markets are getting, you know, people are freaking out about interest rates. And it's like, hmm, well, let's see what happens at these trend lines. Because notice this was an upper bound for a long time. Notice on the pops here, that's where it failed. All right, this is enough for now. If you have more questions, again, stop by the Discord room. The link is in the description below. If you're really trying to learn, again, don't ask for the easy answers. Wish you were better. The saying is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. That is real in everything. If you're looking for the easy answers to get rich quick, to just score a big win in trading, I wish you luck. That happened to me when I first started, and I made a lot of money. And ultimately what happens, I lost it all back because I didn't really understand how to trade. If you're one of those people who got lucky in some sort of overwhelmingly up or down trade, or you made a bunch of money in Bitcoin, or you made a bunch of money doing something that you don't think is repeatable, you have to admit that to yourself. Like I tell people this all the time. When Bitcoin goes from pennies to, you know, 66,000, that was luck if you held it all the way through. What is the next Bitcoin? 
if you think you can identify that with high accuracy, please stop by the Discord room and prove to me how you know that. Because ultimately, it is a little bit of luck. Because there are certain people who've bought certain stocks and they've gone absolutely nowhere in the same period of time as, say, Bitcoin did. For example, say the gold and silver stocks. Now, at some point, does that reverse? That's a great question. But does this make sense to me, to you as the listener, that sometimes you're getting rich on a trade is all luck or bad luck? And how do you manage luck? Well, with probabilities. And that's where I tell people, I'm like, not every trade is the rocket to the moon or the going to the, you know, zero. Like, so that mindset of just assumptions and high degrees of probability likelihood even though you don't know is no different than me picking up a basketball going down to the local rec center and saying you know what i think i've seen trade you know I, i've seen lebron james play basketball i've seen pros, you know growing up i know larry bird michael jordan i i've seen them play give me a basketball oh it's not that easy is it no again because what is the manifestation of greatness in anything. It takes practice, understanding, and ultimately how to execute well. Probability is exactly the same thing. It's like, think of a basketball player. They don't just come down the court and shoot it up from half court. No, they figure out where to sh practice shooting so that they make their shots with high accuracy. They know their points on the floor. It's the same thing of playing tennis or any sport or just any game. Like You figure out where your weaknesses are and you make them better. And then also you figure out where your strengths are and you execute on them exceptionally well same thing with trading if you think you're just throwing darts at a dartboard and hoping to win hope and luck will only take you so far you want to build an edge you want to build a skill what i'm offering and what i tell people is that there's no perfect answer for every person everybody's personalities are different just like you develop a different game in the sport that you play or your job no person is the same so your personality will dictate where you manifest your strengths and weakness. So that's a whole nother topic, but I hope this kind of stuff helps. I appreciate everybody. And again, if you have questions, stop by the Discord room, but please be respectful of everyone's time and ask questions that you're struggling with to find the answers to. Not just an easy answer that if you hit the Google, hit, hit up Google, type it in, you'll find it. Like really feel like you struggled to figure out the answer and then I will gladly help you because that is how the answers mean something to you. Because when you get the answer, after you struggle to find it, it means so much more. All right, have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. For more trading knowledge and insight, click on the videos on the right and also join the Discord room. Link is in the description below. If you have any questions, please stop on by the Discord room and let's chat. Thank you.